The heart of church life in Cornwall is Truro Cathedral, and this morning the choir's rehearsing for a busy weekend ahead. in the county has, over the years, helped support the cathedral, and in return it provides a spiritual focus for half a million Cornish people. But it's running at a big financial deficit. As part of a major cost-cutting exercise, the bishop has been told that the cathedral's world-famous choir, the symbolic heart of cathedral worship, is a luxury that is too expensive to maintain. It may have to be axed. Bishop Bill feels passionately that that would be a tragedy. The cathedral is our kind of shop window, really. Um, and I'm not a musician, but even I can hear that, um, that our, our choir is something special. And people we know about these things to say that too so we, we're very proud of that the way which um, the choir week after week produces great music is just just a delight but uh, it is something which people if we're not careful take for granted and uh, it, it all costs money I mean that's the problem the choir's been given a tough ultimatum. They must raise £150,000 over the next three years, or the axe will fall. A few days later, and at the cathedral, the matter of raising funds to save the choir has now become urgent. It's been decided to organise a big concert to launch the appeal, and already, the choir are busy rehearsing a broad range of music for it, which it's hoped will pull in the punters at six pounds a head. In the cathedral offices, a press launch has been organized, highlighting the need to raise the 150,000 pounds required to keep the choir going. Lists of potential donors are being scrutinized. And already, Initial publicity in the local press has produced a trickle of checks. Lots coming in just in the last few yes, weeks, interestingly. Yes, yes. Yes. Most recently, it's, it's very encouraging. The choir's made up of eight professional male singers and 18 choristers, all from Cornwall. Deputy choirmaster and organist Christopher Gray, one of the organizers of the big launch, thinks it would be a crime if the choir were to be abolished. The Cornish culture, I think, is very musical indeed, and, and I think it's very hard to, um, to, to um, express that strongly enough. I think that uh, music is deep, deeply in, in people's heritage here, and, and that, um, the, the calibre of the, if I can call the, the choristers raw material, and um, the calibre of the choristers when we recruit them at age seven, eight, is incredibly high down here, which um, is a kind of little secret we have down here. That, 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 that's, that's why they've got, one of the reasons anyway, that the choir is so, so good. We have even song Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday during the week and uh, it doesn't matter whether there's six people there or whether there's a hundred people there. Um, I suppose there's such a great infrastructure that needs to go with that and it's a financial infrastructure to, to fund the, um, the choristerships and the lay vicar stipends and choral scholarships and, uh, and the organist salaries most importantly. Um, <laughs> lots of infrastructure investment and, but I suppose more importantly than that, um, it's in the culture of the country. The, the music in a lot of the uh, European major cathedrals is uh, um, fairly, fairly shocking in comparison to the, the, the English uh, cathedrals, I think. We've got a very, uh, very special tradition here, which uh, we must fight tooth and nail to, to preserve, really. Since nothing quite like this has ever been attempted before, no one at the cathedral has any idea what the response of the general public will be. But their hopes are set high. 
The cathedral has a maximum capacity of 1,200. If they could fill the concert with anything like that number, the appeal would get off to a fantastic start. The fear is that church music of such high quality might be too rarefied or exclusive to make most people put their hands in their pockets. But nonetheless, every available chair is brought into service and every available space cleared for standing room. Advanced ticket sales aren't looking promising. Concern over the future of the cathedral choir spreads. It's uh, hugely important, not only to the life and worship of the cathedral, um, but the diocese as a whole. And uh, I think it would be a very sad day indeed if we lost the choir. And the Reverend Pat Robson's presence is... I think the gig is, is a very strong symbol of that. It's the moment of truth for the famous Truro Cathedral Choir. Can they raise the funds to keep going? From a kind of personal and professional point of view, this really has to work out. Yeah, yeah. It's a serious problem. Yeah. If we don't sort out the £50,000, we're going to have to cut music. Meanwhile, down the road in Truro, preparations are underway for a highly significant event in the cathedral's year. A concert that will launch the fundraising campaign, which it's hoped will save Cornwall's world-famous cathedral choir from the axe. Somehow, £50,000 must be raised every year for the next three years to help offset the cathedral's spiralling music bill. I mean, this is the, the launch programme, isn't it? Yeah, yep. With a sort of introduction about... New the, Chief the, Executive the, Richard yeah. Glover knows this ultimatum puts choirmaster Robert Sharp under a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, I am, I must be honest, I am worried. From a kind of personal and professional point of view, this really has to work out. Yeah. yeah. It's a serious problem. Yeah. If we don't sort out the £50,000, we're going to have to cut music. Your job on the day is to do what you do, which is to have the most extraordinary music where they can all sigh about how beautiful all that is. Well, let's hope so, yeah. And then for me to say, and it is beautiful and wonderful, and we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. As the choir are put through their final rehearsals, the big question is, will the general public really be prepared to put their hands in their pockets for what some perceive as a very rarefied form of music? Advanced ticket sales have not been encouraging. That night, just down the road in Truro Cathedral, the big fundraising concert is about to begin. the rectory in Boscastle, like so many others, the vicar Christine Musser is watching events in the cathedral unfold with interest and concern. It really can lift you into another place um, when you're sitting in that beautiful cathedral and um, listening to those wonderful voices. They work extremely hard and produce music of really exceptional quality. It would be a sad day if it, if it went. Yeah, it would be devastating if it went. It really would. Sadly, though, the big launch concert is not a huge success. There are hundreds of empty seats. For choirmaster Robert Sharp, it's a huge disappointment. in a wonderful location on the outskirts of Truro. It offers a privileged and exclusive education to children of well-off families. But there are 18 boys here whose parents would never have normally been able to afford to send them here. These are the choristers of Truro Cathedral, whose school fees are heavily subsidized by scholarships paid for by the cathedral. And one of the reasons their singing is so extraordinarily good is that their whole day revolves around practice. Good. 
The cathedral's hard-headed new chief executive, Richard Glover, who's been brought in to reduce dramatically the cathedral's annual £1 million running costs, is a great admirer of the choir. But says that unless they can raise money to help fund themselves, they'll be regarded as a luxury the cathedral can do without. And the poor launch concert hasn't exactly helped. The choir we've got is far better than we ought to have. I mean, we're, we're top five choir, right up there with the real big cathedrals in terms of quality. Um, problem is we don't have their income. We can't afford what we've got. The boys go to a local private school uh, at great cost and Philosophically, it's quite a challenge to talk about one in four children living in poverty on the one hand and then investing a significant amount of money in a local private school on the other. For every person who, who wants to maintain this quality, there are people who question why, why we spend the best part of a quarter of a million pounds on music at all, given our role in the community. brief I have from ch chapter is that there are no sacred cows. Everything has to change to make sure that Truro Cathedral can continue. If we can't raise enough money to pay for it, we have to cut it. And, it, and the difficulty is that with the choir, you don't just trim bits off the edge, you know, lose a couple of people, because it totally alters the dynamic. So it's, it's kind of all or nothing. You know, either we have what we have, or we start again from scratch. Following the disappointment of the launch concert, it's now hoped that widespread publicity about the desperate need for funds for the choir might pull in some big donations.